So in this video, I'd like to give a brief critique to the uh, view that the Holdeman Mennonite Church, also known as the Church of God in Christ Mennonite, is the one true church. So uh, the founder of their church, John Holdeman, lived uh, in the 1800s, I believe, mid to late 1800s. A uh, real brief history of uh, the founder there. So he belonged to the old Mennonite church. Uh, he lived somewhat of an immoral life. He uh, got a woman pregnant. Uh, and then I believe it was shortly after that time that he was converted, or he claimed to be converted. He married uh, this woman, uh, began to examine his former church and thought that they were had gone astray. They weren't as zealous and fervent and have uh, lost some of that zeal that they had in past generations. So he tried to uh, influence them in that way. Uh, of course, the uh, elders or the bishop there, they really wouldn't listen to him. So he kind of branched off and created his own uh, denomination or conference, as they call it. And so, um, so the first kind of point of critique is the Holdeman Church did not exist prior to the 1800s, right? So there were no Holdeman Mennonites in the 1700s. So then just going back further a step, um, we know that Menno Simons, who, of course, the Mennonites are named after him, um, didn't exist until the 1500s. And uh, he got a lot right. I wouldn't agree with every point, but I think he uh, discovered some uh, biblical truths that have been lost or forgotten. But um, there were no Mennonites prior to the 1500s. So uh, clearly Mennonites in general didn't exist to the Reformation period. Um, I know they like to claim that the Waldensians who existed prior to the Mennonites are their spiritual ancestors, and then they appeal to the Albigensians, the Cathar. Uh, the Waldensians were more aligned with the Reformed Church. A lot of them still practiced infant baptism. Uh, some of them had a strong view of election, if you read some of their confessions. Uh, also, the Albigensians, the Cathar, these were... Uh, Manichaean, somewhat dualistic groups. Uh, they would, wouldn't align uh, very uh, on a lot of points with historic Christian teachings. Uh, so although those groups certainly uh, discovered some truth, they, they had some very serious error as well. So, you know, to claim them as your ancestors uh, would be kind of uh, not very wise, specifically because they deviated uh, in, in views of Christology and, and other doctrines. So you could read and research that on your own. Um, so, and then just going back to the Bible, of course, the first century, they were called Christians in Antioch. So um, we, we know, we all know that verse in Matthew 16, uh, Christ says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Right, so he's talking to Peter, thou art Peter upon this rock, I'll build my church. So what's that talking about? Obviously, he's not talking about the Catholic Church, uh, which is another group that claims to be the one true church. Uh, so Christ was talking about the confession of faith that Peter made, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So on that confession, he'll build his church. Note here that the Christ is building his church, right? So Christ's church doesn't have a uh, mere human founder, but the founder of Christ's church is Christ himself, who is fully God and fully man, uh, the second person of the Holy Trinity. So uh, if the founder of your church was Luther, Calvin, Wesley, John Holdeman, Menno Simons, uh, anybody who originated some sort of denomination or conference, uh, that's not the original Christian church. Those groups did not exist until hundreds of years after the fact. So that whole view of being the one true church just doesn't line up with uh, biblical scrutiny. But just to go a little bit further, uh, we see thing we see verses that talk about the universality of the church. So Paul writes in Ephesians 5, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. So this is a good uh, passage to talk about the universal uh, church. So uh, universal church being all true born-again believers uh, throughout the world, uh, which exist in all kinds of denominations, uh, independent churches, non-independent churches. So they're not limited to some specific group. Uh, how do I know that? Well, in Acts, we read that uh, uh, Paul's admonishing the elders that, uh, you know, to, to watch over the flock of God or feed the, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Did he just purchase the Holdeman Mennonites? Clearly not. 
Uh, he purchased people from all tongues and nations who belong to all all different kinds of uh, church groups. So uh, they're not limited. Christ's sheep are not limited to the Holdeman church. So his body, the church, is found throughout the world, and it comprises all born-again believers, which is something they really don't want to emphasize because, of course, they say that they're the one true church, so you have to belong to their church to be part of the one true church of God. Now, I know they say that there are true Christians in, in other groups and stuff, but, you know, we have it all right. Uh, so, but, you know, even just further critiquing, and, and I'll, I'll probably have to do another video on this, but they have this view called the, cel the celestial flesh uh, doctrine, something that goes back to Menno Simons and Melchior Hoffman. It's the view that somehow uh, Christ's body was... Uh, did not come from Mary. It was of a celestial substance or heavenly nature. So we know that Christ was always God. He was the eternal God, existed from all eternity, and that he took on human flesh. But they have this view that uh, somehow his flesh wasn't, or his human nature wasn't truly human as yours and mine. Um, and, and I'll go into that in another video, but uh, that's not the historic Christian teaching. So if you're going to claim to be the historic church, uh, you should line up with the historic Christian teaching of Christology, namely the hypostatic union. And you can look that up if you don't know what that is, but I would do some research on that as well. Um, so the whole idea of being the one true church just doesn't line up. It doesn't stand up. And and furthermore, you, you couldn't just, uh, if you belong to the Holdeman church, you can't just you know withdraw your membership, say, well, you know, I'm, I think I'm more of a Pentecostal, so I'm going to go ahead and be with that group, but I still maintain the Christian faith. They won't let you do that. You'll be excommunicated. And to them, if you're excommunicated, you're basically tantamount to losing your salvation. Um, and so, which is absolutely absurd. Um, I've talked to other conservative Mennonite groups and they definitely don't hold that view. Uh, most conservative Mennonites believe that uh, you can transfer to other Christian bodies and still be a part of Christ church, still be a, a true believer. And yet with this group, uh, you know, they're so exclusive and they think they have everything so right that you, you know, if you don't belong to their body or not part of the true church. So, which is really sad. And it's, it's very divisive. It's very schismatic and sectarian. So it's very, it, it's very sad that John Holdeman, um, you know, instead of being more sober minded and really examining the word church has found the New Testament. And then just seeing that there was churches with all kinds of errors that were still genuine churches. I mean, look at the, Churches in Revelation, look at the church of Galatia, Corinth, my goodness, all kinds of problems going on, compromises, and so on and so forth. And Paul writes to them, says they're churches. But yet the Holdemans think you have to be, you know, line up 100% on every doctrine or practice that they think is biblical. Like the men have to wear beards and, and, and so on and so forth. And if you don't hold that, then, you know, you're, you've deviated, you know, you're not considered part of the, the true church. So uh, just kind of really disappointing that they, they have those kind of views. So if you're a Holdeman Mennonite watching this, I, I really pray you would uh, do, do do your own research. There's a, uh, a couple, Will and Vivian Stoppel. Uh, I believe the website's called theholdemans.com. You can look that up. They uh, were asked to do a book uh, on the Holdeman Church being the one true church, and they discovered to their shock that the, the claim was false. They were, they were very uh, faithful Holdeman Mennonites, and they realized that, hey, this teaching does not line up historically or biblically, and uh, they wrote a website kind of critiquing Holdeman Mennonite teachings so you could check that out on your own and uh, and see, uh, you know, where, where they err. And uh, they have much more information on that site about, about the Holdeman teaching. So I would encourage you to look that up. Uh, if you've never been born again, if you've never truly repented of your sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, looking only to him, not to any church body, not to any uh, extra biblical rules or, or even the law of God for your salvation, but only to Christ, realizing he alone can save you and he alone keeps your salvation and he alone is the savior of the body. If you've never done that, I pray that today would be the day of your salvation. Thank you for watching this video. God bless.